Staff in the room would wear extra protection in the form of a lead apron, and they are extra shields to protect the staff who are exposed to extra constantly in their jobs. What we are performing here is an angiogram, which is an x-ray of the arteries. The angiogram is about looking for those narrowings or blockages. First, the doctor will start by inserting local anesthetic to the patient. The patient is usually awake. The doctor may use some mild sedation so that the patient is relaxed. There is no need to, for the patient to be asleep. The tube is inserted through an artery in the wrist or sometimes to the top of the leg. In this case, the doctor is using to the top of the leg, then thread it up to the heart, then inject the X-ray dye into the arteries. Here, the X-ray dye then outlines where the arteries are blocked. The tube advances towards the heart, and this is a guided procedure. The images are shown in real time on the monitor. And we are with Dr. Naveen Sicharan, an interventional cardiologist, who operates both in the private and public sector. But Dr. Sichiran, I understand that you were trained in the USA. Yes, that's correct. I recently returned home. I was based at the University of Florida for four years and subsequently to that, uh, the University of Vermont for an additional four years. Tell the viewers, after an angiogram, what can they expect? At the end of the angiogram, the interventional cardiologist will make a decision or conclude based on their findings whether the patient is a uh, candidate, a suitable candidate for, for example, angioplasty, how, which is what it's previously known as, so it's by its new name, percutaneous coronary intervention, or whether or not they may be, need more invasive procedures such as a coronary artery bypass surgery, also known as open heart surgery, bypass surgery, or cabbage. Explain to me exactly what is angioplasty before you go to compare um, angioplasty as opposed to open heart surgery. Okay, so angioplasty uh, refers to a procedure. The heart arteries are being treated via balloons. It has been now superseded by stenting, coronary stents, which we'll get into a bit later. Uh, and it was been pioneered in Europe and in the US many years ago. So you are explaining to me, you tell me that um, you call some names, like you mentioned the stent. Sure. Then you mentioned the balloon. Um, you're explaining that with a heart attack or heart failure or heart disease, there is some blockage or narrowing there in the artery. So this is acting as a what? As, a, as an expansion? Is it to open back the artery to have a normal blood flow? Yes, so absolutely, mm -hmm. uh, you're right. Uh, basically, a heart attack is almost as similar as a stroke. Heart attack refers to an acute sudden blockage in the heart vessels or the heart arteries, whereas a stroke, it's the same phenomena where there's a blockage, however, it's in the cerebral or brain arteries. It's a mechanical blockage and it often requires a mechanical solution. So the patient is optimized on medication such as blood thinners and we proceed to do this procedure as soon as possible. As a famous South African cardiologist once referred to uh, doing heart attacks, it's uh, time is heart muscle, time is myocardia. So the sooner we get to open the artery or relieve the blockage, the better for the patient. So tell me, how soon is soon? Are there different time metrics? Um, overall, we aim to try to do this procedure within 90 minutes. Your heart is roughly the size of your fist. It's usually located in the left portion of your chest. Well, I, I thought it was the boxer. <laughs> <laughs> and um, basically, you can see these red stripes here. Those are referred to the, as the arteries, the coronary arteries. And basically when there's a blockage, uh, there are many risk factors for blockages, uh, male gender, age, diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia, which is bad cholesterol, tobacco use, smoking, uh, being obese, and so forth. There are multiple factors. And as a result, uh, there are basically fat-laden droplets that occur, or what you call atheromal plaques, on the interior of the heart arteries and they are very volatile so i liken them to as a volcano sometimes they can be quiescent or quiet and sometimes it can suddenly explode and cause an eruption which is clinically manifested as a heart attack this one here is a balloon it's in the still the casing basically use them as uh, two parts of the same procedure so with the blockage because sometimes it's a soft plaque mm -hmm. um, we insert the balloon first to really kind of softly relieve or inflate and then after we remove the balloon and we go up with the stent, which I mentioned, it is like a spring in a ballpoint pen. 
It's made of uh, many different alloys, platinum being the most common, chromium as well. It's usually coated with some advanced drugs, which are actually used in cancer therapies. And we insert the stent, similar to the process and the standard interventional technique with the balloon. And when it's deployed or implanted, um, it stays there, it's permanent. Pretty much every six months, there's a new iteration of the stent or generation of the stent. Right now, it's almost on par with bypass surgery uh, for results. And definitely stents are actually considered the superior therapy in heart attack settings. Most persons, when they think about their doctor immediately, they think about sickness, they think about death, um, very negative. However, your doctor can be positive, your doctor can be, your doctor is an accessory that is much needed. And I'm going to put you on the spot, Dr. C. to sure. ask you what is your best heart joke? Ah, my best heart joke is that I'm a cardiologist and I like to fix broken hearts. Oh, well, it's probably time for us to start loving our heart. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. thank you very much, sure. Dr. C. Thank you. Yes. At the ACI Heart Attack Center, we have saved many lives in that critical moment. Trust ACI heart attack specialists with cutting edge technology and 24 hour support. Call us at 628-4740 or 800P. Visit us at West Shore Private Medical Hospital, bringing quality healthcare to life. As early as 12 weeks, your heartbeat can be heard. Heart disease remains the main cause of death and emergency angioplasty is the scientifically proven way to treat heart attack. ACI Heart Attack Center, they are the pioneers and most experienced in angioplasty in Trinidad and Tobago. Don't take a chance with your heart. Go to ACI at West Shore Private Hospital. Call 628 4740 for more information. I am with Dr. Ronald Henry, an interventional cardiologist, and Dr. Henry, you are described as the godfather. I would not say grandfather, but the godfather of cardiology, as well as angioplasty. Yes? Yes, you better not say grandfather. No, I'm not saying that <laughs> at all, because I think you look quite young. Uh, okay. Yes? Oh, thank you very much. After you're dealing with heart all the time, you're supposed to have some secret formulas there for me, uh, and I'm going to ask you some of them. Dr. Henry, as um, your phone, your phone update, your computer, I see that you're not a Luddite, you're well up to date. That update, what is new in angioplasty? What is new? I know you're telling me about the Watchman. So yes, indeed, uh, tell indeed. me more about so that. I think, <clears throat> so I think one of, the, um, one of the exciting new things, because there are always new um, innovations coming on stream. One of the new things is, uh, whilst we've um, thought of interventional cardiology, Usually, this has been done to open up blocked arteries yes. and, to, and to get blood flowing. But sometimes, you've got to close off a chamber, um, especially if that chamber is producing unwanted clots in the circulation that can travel through the body and most devastatingly... You're talking about stroke related. I am yes. absolutely talking about stroke. As we get older, um, in addition to heart attacks, stroke becomes an increasing concern. And whilst a lot of strokes can be prevented uh, by tight blood pressure control, a second cause for stroke is a heart rhythm called atrial fibrillation. Now, this heart rhythm can sometimes be felt like a palpitation or a fluttering in the chest, but sometimes it's totally asymptomatic. But because a part of the heart is not beating regularly, it's just squiggling like a bag of worms, clots form in the heart and these clots can fly off into the circulation and get up to the brain 60% of the time and can cause devastating stroke not just once but recurrently and this has been a challenge to treat the normal treatment <clears throat> is to be on blood thinners like some of your listeners may be familiar with names like warfarin, warfarin yes. and uh, which um, is actually as people as some people know is also like a common constituent of rat poison. Mm -hmm. But, um, and, and there are newer medications that are often advertised on TV. It's important to, for your viewership to know that medications that prevent thinners using heart attacks, like aspirin and um, what we call things against the platelets, 
do not work for stroke prevention, so which requires a different type of blood thinner. Having said that, <clears throat> not everybody can tolerate blood thinners. And people taking blood thinners sometimes have internal bleeding. People with ulcers, people with operations, people who um, might have had bleeds into their heads, people by, you know, a number of people. And we didn't have options for those people previously. Now we do, and there's a fascinating new uh, device here called the Watchman device. I like its name. <laughs> no relation to the calypso. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> and um, and 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 this is uh, this is part of the delivery device that we have. It's it's a very sophisticated device, and um, but uh, at the end of the day, what is done is that the interventional cardiologist can thread this into the patient, puncture a hole in the heart to get across to the correct chamber, and then release a device that is sort of like the stopper in your sink that you put to block the drain. So this device has compressed in it a stopper device and that can then be released into the uh, circulation, into the uh, chamber of the heart and block the chamber that produces the clots. This uh, procedure um, has saved many patients from strokes and for the people who can't tolerate uh, the, the blood thinners that are appropriate for preventing stroke, um, you don't have to go back to rely on, to hope that uh, aspirin and a couple of things which have been shown not to work, um, that to hope that that will help you. Now there's the Watchman device available in Trinidad. Dr. Henry, in closing, I would say that the greatest resource of any country is our human capital. And the, the heart of the human capital is actually the heart of the human. And that is our heart. So guard your heart, love yourself, and thank you. Thank you very much.